Going to get started. Welcome and good evening. This event tonight is part of Black History Month. This year, under the motto Black Resistance, Redefining the Norm. And the acronym NORM stands for Navigating Obstacles with Renewed Momentum. Thank you for coming, everybody, tonight for this evening, lecture evening for the opening new exhibit. I would like to make a couple of announcements on behalf of the A State Museum because this is going to be a very important year for us. This year marks A State Museum's 90th anniversary, 1933 through 2023, serving Northeast Arkansas with superb educational uniqueness and dedication. Now you want to think about this for a moment and try to wrap your mind around this, to be amazed, to be proud of this museum here in Northeast Arkansas. 2023 is also the year of A-State Museum's fifth consecutive reaccreditation with the American Alliance of Museums, the country's highest professional accreditation body for museums. Thus, we've been among the best of the best from 1973 through 2023. Another anniversary, 50 years accredited by the American Alliance of Museums. Another reason to be proud of this jewel of a museum in the remoteness of Northeast Park. So the heat is on already with reams of accreditation paperwork, and we will be kept very busy this year to add another 12 years, hopefully, of being recognized as one of America's top not museums. Before I introduce the speaker, I would like you to please turn off your cell phones. There will be a Q&A session after the presentation, and then I would like to point out uh, when you leave this room to view the exhibit, 
out of this door, right around the corner is where it starts. And if you would like to leave the room through this door, you have to go up the stairs, and then you're headed right into the exhibit. <clears throat> Please don't touch the image. And I would like to extend our special thanks from within our staff members for to Jill Carey, Curator of Education, who was very instrumental in putting this exhibit together. Now I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker for the evening. Dr. Lily M. Fears is the Professor of Media and Chair of Multimedia Journalism Program in the School of Media and Journalism at Arkansas State University. She serves as the liaison for faculty diversity in the university's division of diversity, inclusion, and community engagement. Dr. Fears earned a bachelor's degree in journalism and a master's degree in mass communication from Arkansas State University in the 1980s. She graduated from the University of Missouri, where she earned a doctorate in journalism. She began reading magazines and browsing yearbooks already in elementary school. Her first introduction to a State University was when her aunt brought home a copy of the 1973 ASU yearbook. Young Lily had just finished fifth grade and her aunt had just returned home from her freshman year at a State. Dr. Fierce's interest in visual imagery preserved history continues to this day, which is why she enjoys teaching media history and other subjects in mass communication and journalism. So when I saw Dr. Fear's presentation on this topic about a year ago, <laughs> was it early April last year, um, I knew that I had found a superb project for the exhibit at the State Museum. And uh, that was only three days into my new job. And here we are, almost exactly nine months later, and the exhibit is now up. Thank you, Lily, for your enthusiasm to sticking it out with us on this journey. Let's give her a round of applause. Thank you all for coming out tonight. You look great out there. And I want to shout out to everybody out there listening and watching on the live stream. I want to thank my former student, Lucas Kale, for agreeing to do the live stream. It is being brought to us by KLEKFM. So proud. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> okay, well, let's get started. The African American experience. At A State, yearbook snapshot from 1956 until 19 until 2013. And what you see here are copies of those two, the first and the last yearbook that I'll be speaking about. Uh, you'll hear me make references to uh, sources and oral history interviews. So I wanted to acknowledge that uh, a lot of what I've been getting the backstory about some of the images come from this book that I love, Voices from A State. It is the 75th anniversary edition of the history of the United, of, of, of Arkansas State. Also, uh, I wanted to acknowledge our centennial celebration book, 19, uh, Embrace the Past, 1909 to 2009. So, uh, when I say sources, or, and I'm talking, I'm quoting somebody, it comes from those two documents. Just to set the tone for the 1950s, Okay, we know that the first students arrived in fall 1955. They were Walker Strong, Frederick Turner, and Larry Williams. So uh, when I show you the, what yearbook I'm talking about, keep in mind, uh, think an event could have happened anywhere from August the previous year to the end of the spring year, spring semester, next semester. Okay, we see Frederick Turner. He's getting involved. He's a junior by now in the 1958 book. There he is in the Arkansas State College Singers. Also in 1958, the 1958 edition, we see the first uh, female students arrive. Shirley Smith, Billie Jean Van Pelt, 
Nadine Sweat and Louise Speed came in the spring semester. By the way, that's one of that uh, photo that I just showed is one of the panels that uh, Ms. Carey put together. So you'll see that again in the exhibit. And by the time he's a senior, uh, his, I found out that his nickname still is FC. When I talk to people, they'll say FC, and I'm thinking, oh, Lieutenant Colonel, okay. F.C. Turner, he's a senior, and he's in the P.E. Majors and Minors Club. And then, in the, also in the 1959 edition, we see Walter Strong and Frederick Turner in the senior class uh, section. And so technically, Walter Strong finished first in 1959, and then F.C., uh, Frederick Turner, finishes in 1960. Both men would go on to earn master's degrees. They returned in the 70s and earned master's degrees. Okay, on to the 60s. Uh, I put Dionne Warwick there on the front of one of my favorite magazines that I read as a child because guess what? Dion came here in 1968. Read that headline. Dionne Warwick concert, not enough of a good thing. Uh, also in 1962, Fat Domino was here. Now think about this. This is the early 60s. And then in the late 60s, Ray Charles and Sam and Dave come to campus. All of this is by the SGA. Uh, in, in the 1967 edition, we see the emergence of the black athletes, the black student athletes to be exact. And the first one that I see appearing in the near, yearbook is Mr. Milton Sullivan. He's a native of Jonesboro, and he turns out to be a two-sport athlete. He uh, played basketball, and he was a member of the track team, which I didn't know was called the thin plant at that time. In uh, 1969, uh, we see uh, Miss Joyce Renee Sharp appearing uh, in some photos. She's from Clarendon, and the reason why I chose her is because at the end of 1969, uh, she's finishing, uh, I guess it was her fre freshman year, and I'm just going to Clarendon Elementary School as a second grader. We just moved here from Chicago, and I began attending uh, the segregated schools of Clarendon, Arkansas, so I barely missed Miss Joyce. Uh, because in the building, the high school kids were on one end and we were on the other end, elementary school. I haven't met her, but someone told me that her dad was the principal. So, but when we got there, there was another principal. She's also the first uh, young black woman to enter a Miss ASU pageant. Uh, in the 1969 edition, uh, edition also, we see uh, the BSA, Black Students Association, emerge. And I just wanted to acknowledge the white gentleman on, he's on my left, your left too, is Mr. Paul Root. He's the advisor. And his son is here tonight, uh, Dr. Jeff Root, who is uh, Dean of Social Sciences at uh, Washington University. So he's here with his wife, Deborah, Dr. Deborah Root. So let's give them a hand. They, They drove all the way up, and I told him, and he was so nice, he told me about how after this year, well, he said the students asked his dad to be their advisor, and he agreed to do so. And they were here just one year, they left and moved to Indiana to work to help a friend who was a president, uh, Jeff. And then when the friend came back to work in Washington, they followed him back to Washington, and they stayed there. And now Jeff is one of the deans there, and his wife, Deborah. Uh, is a professor and she's the yearbook advisor, so uh, that's great. I'm so happy to have them here tonight. Uh, also, 1969 had a whole lot of photos of these two basketball players, John Belcher and Shelby Haywood Kegler. And I believe Shelby is watching, Dr. Shelby is watching tonight. But all I can tell you, and I don't have time, there were 12 pages of basketball photos in that edition. <laughs> And I was worn out when because I, I make notes of everything. When you're doing qualitative research, you make notes of everything. Uh, so we're going to move on to the 70s, and there's a reason why I open with Stevie Wonder. Stevie came here in 1970. Uh, so BB King, King came in 73, and then uh, Bill Russell was here. And I have an arrow drawn to Mr. Leroy Grant because I know when uh, Mr. Russell died earlier this year. Uh, Mr. Grant uh, posted this same photo on Facebook, so I think he's out there watching too on the live stream. But yeah, they uh, were big time. Uh, in the 1971 edition, we see the first two instructors arrive, uh, Dr. C. Calvin Smith. He wasn't a doctor at the time, but he went on to become Dr. Calvin Smith. 
And we see Major Frederick Turner return as a, an instructor in military science. So these are the first two instructors. In fall 1972, uh, Herman Strickland at the time and Wilbur Gaines arrived as instructors in education. And then in 1974, the first two female instructors appear in the yearbook. I say appear because uh, the yearbook is it gives references, but sometimes the dates might be off, but they are the first two that appear. Is Dr. Strickland here tonight? Okay, but um, but anyway, I just wanted to acknowledge them if he were here. Okay, so I mentioned Stevie Wonder, but there was something else on that page of Stevie. Look at the photo at the top. Uh, black students in the late 60s and 70s were, uh, began to do a lot of protesting. A lot of things that happened. Dr. King just, it's just had just been assassinated in April 1968. So uh, people are, black people are really active. And I had one of my professors at University of Missouri say, explain that one reason we started saying we were black is that's the first time we named ourselves. Before that, we were colored, Negro, and all that. But when we took on that term black, that's the first time we named ourselves. And I'll just tell you about me, a little first grader in Chicago. I was coloring all of my people black with a black crayon. That's what, I mean, James Brown's song, Say It Loud, I'm Black and I'm Proud. I'm seven years old, I'm all in with this thing. I'm coloring everybody black too with my crayon. So, um, but anyway, what I do here is just blow up some of the things I could distinguish on those signs. Dixie is fading away. Speaking of Dixie, who won the war? And there are several photos uh, of that protest. Uh, so uh, that's the one that appeared in the yearbook. I know in the 75th anniversary book, they used another photo. Okay. Uh, so that's a, a larger uh, snapshot of the photo. What you see on this slide is uh, the gentleman who was the SGA president. He's a senior, Mr. Danny Pierce. He still lives here in Jonesboro. Also, see Dr. Donald Meeks at the bottom. Um, I'm just going to read what uh, how what led up to the band stop playing uh, the song Dixie, and that's what they were protesting. Dr. Minx is quoted in this book as saying, "By my own choice, rather than being moved to it by necessity, I just one year closed the door to the band room and told the kids, quote, I don't expect you to agree with me." but the problems are such that I think in the best interest of this organization and this institution, I am not going to put a piece of music in the folios this year that we have played for years. I don't want to make any big to do about it. It will make no, I, I will make no announcement about it. We just simply don't have it in the folios and we will find another spirited tune to take the place of it. Well, so I just, so I lost a few friends over it and kept a few kids from getting beat up by doing it. And then Danny Pierce goes on to say, he talked about, he quoted, he, he describes how it affected the white students in his interview. He says, quote, that doesn't sound like much today, but emotions were real high on the campus among the students about, about why should that minority of people, meaning blacks, be able to tell us that we can't play Dixie? And yet we were able to see that that was an absolute insult to the dignity of a certain group of people. It was a very small thing really to give up, to show that we were going to try to learn and respect all. So that's why I labeled that, I, I used his very words to label that um, this slide. And I admire him because he can only be between 21 and 22 years of age. And I also just add that this is one of the reasons why diversity matters. Because when you're around people who are not like you, you get a chance to learn about their differences. And it is hope that you, uh, we will uh, learn from that and be better uh, as citizens. Okay, this is just a photo of another young lady and it's showing how uh, student, black students were really getting involved in uh, joining a various organizations. This is Demetrius Johnson. She's a member of the Charter Line of Delta Sigma Theta. She was in the talent show just like George Sharp was a few years earlier. She's in the ASU concert choir. She's a princess platoon, just really active. And she's from my hometown. <laughs> uh, in 1970, we uh, see the first uh, Who's Who. That year, it was Frederick Howard and Curtis B. 
And then later we uh, find out in the 1973 edition that Herschel Jones is the first black Wilson Award recipient. He was also in Who's Who, but he was the first black Wilson Award recipient. Uh, here's something I thought was interesting. In the 1970 edition, Dr. Lawrence Davis, who was then the president of Arkansas AM and N, Pine Bluff, was the commencement speaker for the spring 1969 commencement. I thought that was interesting to invite Dr. Davis up, and we had to do a little research to find out who he was. Uh, the, look, the cute couple there on the right, that's Shelby Haywood. He's king of hearts, and he's presenting a box of candy to Miss Valentine, Romeo Stewart. The two were elected by the AWS to reign over the St. Valentine's Day uh, dance, I believe. And last year, they, this same couple celebrated 52 years of marriage. <laughs> And one month from today, it'll be 53, and I think they're out there watching on the live stream, too. So happy early anniversary. Uh, in the 1970s, we see uh, blacks being appointed to the Board of Trustees. The first one was Mr. Elijah Coleman in 1971, and ben, uh, Mr. Ben McGee was appointed later in that decade. Also, we see uh, Mr. Shelby, he's actually Dr. Shelby Haywood Kegler. Uh, he's the, technically the first coach. He's a, he was a part of the uh, basketball coach. Later in that decade, we see Mr. David Mitchell uh, become a member of the coaching staff. He was a receiver's coach, running back coach, and he was the first African-American to uh, get a scholarship on the football team. On this slide, you see the first uh, black women to appear on the homecoming court. Miss Darlissa Mitchell in 1971. Actually, she's married to Coach Mitchell in the previous slide. They're still happily married. And in 1972, it was Miss Irma Gates. I believe both of them are from West Memphis. Uh, we all know a lot about Ms. Uh, Dr. Thomas Hill. He had a great run here in the late 60s, early 70s, and finally he competed in the Olympics and won the bronze medal. So he was really featured in 1973 edition. Uh, this is the BSA Choir. It, it surfaces in the 1973 yearbook, and I draw an arrow to my Aunt Cleora. As I mentioned, she's just finishing her freshman year, and I'm just finishing the fifth grade. And when she brought that yearbook home, I was, it was all mine the whole summer. She would explain things to me uh, in the yearbook. Uh, so that's my auntie, Auntie Fiora. I had another aunt here, Edith, but I don't see a whole lot of pictures of her. Uh, something else you saw the, uh, the students doing is they started coming up with their own pageants. The, the Ebony Queens and Miss Black ASU. I think this is the same pageant because when I read this caption here, it describes Agnolia Gay as um, Miss Black ASU Ebony Queen. So I've got to do a little bit more research and find out really how uh, this pageant developed. But this was something really big with the ladies uh, in the 70s and still to this day. Uh, in the fall of 1973, we see the uh, first black Greek letter organizations arrive on campus. I believe the first one was Alpha Phi Alpha. Uh, any alphas in the house? Adrian, where are you? Okay, okay, all right. Uh, then Omega Psi Phi, and then Alpha Kappa Alpha, and then the, and the Delta, all in one year. And it is my understanding that you all will celebrate 50 years in April. Okay. Okay, so by 1975, we do get the, finally get the first African-American queen, homecoming queen, Miss Marilyn Broadway, and the runner-up was Miss Pamela Lee, who was in the audience, Pam, way back. I found out that this new, this right here made national news, um, and the president of the BSA at the time, here's a quote from him, he said, no predominantly Caucasian university in the South at that time had ever elected a minority as their homecoming queen and first runner up. Our motto was unity. Okay, you also see a lot of administrators uh, getting to black people getting administrative positions and staff positions. Uh, the late uh, Dr. Rossi, Mossy Richmond is on your left and I'll show him in a later slide. 
Uh, he held several positions here. Ms. Robin Lyle was over developmental program. I believe Jill, she visited last year. She's just turned 90. Yeah. Um, emailed me on Facebook, so at some point I'd like to talk to her. Uh, Dr. Bill Carey, first chairman of a, a division. Uh, Mr. R.T. Williams, director of personnel, and Robert Cobbs. Some of these people on the right side of the screen, I've never met them. Uh, Robert Cobbs, I uh, was assistant director of the Rain Center, and then uh, Dr. Thomas Hill, he was a doctor at the time. He returned and worked as a counselor for a while. Uh, a few other milestones. Uh, women, you notice I haven't said anything about women's sports, but women's sport, sports finally arrived in, uh, NCAA sports arrived in the mid 70s. And Ms. Sharon Lee was a member of the first basketball team. Sharon is here. <laughs> Along with Annette Guy and Belinda Dotson were the uh, three black women who were that first team. Also, Kappa Alpha Psi appears in the yearbook uh, around 1976. Mr. Ed Preston, I learned that he went to the Olympics, but apparently he didn't medal, but I still think that is quite an accomplishment to uh, go to the Olympics. Uh, now, here's something that's really remarkable. In the 1977 edition, uh, you see the photo of the all-black homecoming court. Uh, the queen was LaDoris Spite, and they're the names of the other young women, Estella Perry, Ramona Ward, Thelma Cannon. So that was quite an accomplishment, too. Okay, so we're going to move on to the 80s. I'm going to switch up here a little bit. The 80s, okay. All right, so... You know, I got Debbie and Al joining there because this was a decade where we I got introduced to them on the international scene, as well as the national scene. Uh, we're still, uh, famous people are still coming to campus. I don't have everyone here, but I just, I'll just show a couple of them. Reverend Ralph Abernathy, who worked with Dr. King a lot on the, on the ground in marches. Uh, then Stokely Carmichael, they all appear in the 1980 edition. More leaders uh, emerge. You, uh, we get another board of trustees member. Uh, then we see Dr. J.W. Mason, and he's director of personnel services. And Dr. Herman Strickland, he's uh, moving up the ranks as well. Now it looks like the BSA Choir becomes the United Voices. I need to verify that, but uh, the United Voices is now being used for the Gospel Choir. Uh, in 1984, Al Joyner, uh, is doing very well. He competes in the Olympics and wins the gold in the triple jump. So in the 1985 edition, we have photos of him, but I will say this was not a good year for color photos for black people. If you look at these photos, it, it, but they do have a much better uh, photo of him right there. He's a very fun person, and he has been back to Jones Road to visit several times. Uh, 1985, of course, uh, Debbie Turner wins Miss ASU. And then over on the right, I put my photo of the, my, me being a who's who in 1985 there. And then Wendell Williams. In 1986. But notice up above those photos, I have the question, where are the who's who? Because in later years, you're going to see that number really go up. And Keep in mind now, I'm a graduate student. I came here as a junior, so it took me a couple of years to, you know, get involved and, and put some things get under my belt, some accomplishments. So I was thinking, if I hadn't applied that year, would we have had anybody? Uh, but anyway, so one person, the numbers, and I'm going to show you a, a, a chart that I made. Okay, in the late 80s, we see uh, uh, Mr. Rock. The Honorable Rodney Slater, he was our Director of Government Relations. Larry, uh, Mr. Larry Ross uh, is appointed to the board. And I see my first be black uh, baseball player, Don Park. I remember him. And this photo right here I thought was really interesting. We've just finished the Convocation Center. And this is a photo of, the, I guess, the, one of the first graduations of the Convocation Center. You have in the top right corner, Governor Bill Clinton. In the top left, a photo that just happens to have Dr. Herman Strickland, the photo beneath that, Dr. Calvin Smith, and then the bottom right corner, we got a photo of Dr. Wilbur Gaines. And I, I just want to ask, if I could, the editors that year, did you all know you were putting history makers all on the page together with the governor? I just thought that was so cool, you know? 
Uh, right there, and I'm gonna show, I, I'm gonna ask them about that too. Okay, so we're gonna move on to the 90s. Uh, in 1989, Dr. Hill, he, Dr. Thomas Hill, he returned to get his Distinguished Alum Award. So he appears in the 1990 edition. And uh, I see my first black male uh, cheerleader, Curtis, I believe he owns uh, the big Olympic or cheerling, cheering uh, company here in the city, so he's done well. But what I thought was interesting in this issue, I call this my uh, triangle. We have Debbie Turner, daughter of Lieutenant Colonel Frederick C. Turner, Jr. She's Miss America by now. Then we have D.D. Strickland, daughter of Dr. Herman Strickland, Strickland, one of the first faculty members. Then we have Dan Strong, daughter of Mr. Walter Strong, the first student, first uh, graduate, all in the same edition. I thought that was so neat, 1990. And I know all of them, personally. Okay, 91 through 93, we get another uh, Black Homecoming Queen, and then the late Dr. Freda Carroll gets the President's Fellow Award, and we see Dr. Jennifer Rice Mason uh, being named Assistant Dean of Students, and Miss Sonia Tate. Uh, she was a really uh, good athlete. She uh, did really well in basketball. She went on to play in the WNBA. And she recently, within the last five to 10 years, was on the coaching staff here. And she also ran track. So that's uh, Miss Sonia uh, Tate right there. In 1994, we see our first black Indian princess mascot, Paris Tiger. She said that she was a mascot in high school, so she thought she'd try out here. And I had another really nice photo up here. It's in one of my other collections. And you see Mr. Arthur A.G. Uh, from Hoop Dreams, I believe. This is a documentary that followed him from his high school through college. And we see that NAACP up here. Also something I saw happening were the uh, organizations that target aspiring black professionals starting student chapters. So right here you have one for the black engineers in the 1995 edition. Then in 1996-97, we get the first uh, black SGA president, Brian Bradford. And uh, what I do also, since uh, Dr. Richmond passes away in 1995, I just highlight some of the other titles he held while he, while he was here. Vice President for uh, University Relations, Vice President for Student Affairs, and of course, uh, the Dean of the University College. So, uh, and, and the students devote four pages to uh, this tribute to him. And in there they say that really the University College kind of started as an experiment and he built it and to what it is today. Uh, a couple years later, his widow, uh, Mrs. Belmar Richmond, is named to the board. Uh, this is in the 1998 issue. This is Paris Tyler. I already mentioned she was an Indian princess. But it's my understanding that the Unity Park that we now have for Black Greek Letter Organization uh, was her brainchild in the late 1990s. So these are some uh, photos in this particular yearbook that are dedicated to that uh, Unity Park ceremony. You see Dr. Wilbur Gaines, one of the speakers. Also in that uh, the, the next year, uh, Dr. Debbie Turner returns to get her Distinguished Alum Award. This is uh, a slide, I found this page in the 1998 yearbook. I thought it was interesting that they highlight that we have an enrollment of over 1,000 minority students. Minority, uh, when you look at the photos, you think they mean black. But I thought it was interesting, you see my note here, 14 years later, that number more than doubled by 2012. So that was, I thought that was an accomplishment for the university. Uh, so we're going to move on to the 2000s and the 2010s. Uh, I call this the, I nicknamed this the royalty decade. We had five black homecoming queens, and uh, in a couple of those years, we had uh, black kings, too. 2000, 2002, 05, 07, and 2010. And also, there was a Miss Black, uh, uh, a black woman win Miss ASU. So I thought that was just interesting, so many queens in one decade. In 2000, we see uh, Sigma Gamma Rho sorority arrive on campus, and it's my understanding that this is the only black sorority that was chartered on a predominantly white campus. 
uh, Ms. Angela Barber is a Wilson Award recipient and former surgeon Dr. Joycelyn Elders returns as a speaker at the Delta Symposium. Uh, 2002, Ms. Florian Bingham is appointed to the board and I see my first uh, black soccer player, that's Faith Hanna, and I see Dr. Uh, Glenn Jones appear. I know he was hired around 2002 as the Chief Diversity Officer, and he sent me his title. He said he always held that title, but he had some other titles to go with it. And Paris is leaving. All that's one page, so I just kept it there because Paris was leaving. She's at University of Arkansas right now. Uh, at the moment. She's been there for several years. I was telling you earlier about the who's who, what I found fascinating about that is in 2003, that number reached 29 African Americans. You say, well, what does that figure look like as a whole? Well, there were 98 who's who that year shown in the yearbook. So that's about 30%. I thought that was quite an achievement. And I said, at some point, I'd like to talk to some of these young adults. Well, they're now in their early 40s. I guess that's their young. <laughs> uh, but what I know so far is that they are on the tail end of Gen X, and they are the oldest millennials. I've done a little research on that. They were born between 79, 80, 81, and 82. I know that much about them, but I just want to know a little bit of, of, about, more about them and see what was going on from 2000 to 2003, or what, yeah, to uh, get everybody all hyped up about those two. I know it was a big deal to me, and even though I came here as a junior, I had I uh, finished at a community college, so it took me a while, but I had my eye on that who's who. So I just want to know more about them. In 2006 to 2008, uh, we now have what's called the, the Diversity Excellence Award. Dr. Vita McLean was one of the first uh, recipients. And we also have uh, Brothers for Brothers uh, being advised by Dr. Glenn Jones himself. And now you see he's uh, Interim Vice Chancellor for Academic Affairs. And Dr. Lonnie Williams, Associate Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. And Dr. Williams is here tonight. Raise your hand, Dr. Williams. <laughs> out of this, out of this brother-to-brother -brother organization emerged uh, this duo team of Morgan Pippen and Jerome uh, Thomas. Morgan was one of my upper bound students, and Jerome was one of my actual college students. So they run and we in uh, SGA and uh, <laughs> Dr. Jones had me laughing one time and said, now when we started the group, we didn't mean for them to go and run for SDA and do all that, but they ran and I uh, won. And here's Morgan, he's uh, part of the global leaders. He traveled to Egypt. When you see that kind of stuff with one of your upper bound kids, just really get excited. And Dr. Yvette Allen is right there. She was one of those homecoming queens that I showed you earlier. So 2009, uh, I finally find a picture of Dr. Gloria Gibson, who was Dean of Humanities and Social Sciences. She, uh, of course, has left. And I was telling you about those uh, student organizations that target aspiring black professionals. By now, we have one for black accountants, one for black social workers, and we have Circle of Trust, which is, uh, the, I, I call it the sister organization, mentoring organization, for bro to brother to brother. It's for uh, black women. And then uh, 2010, uh, I was just struck by this uh, kind of this reign of black women uh, being the president of the Student Activities Board in 2010, 2011, and 2013. Also, I see another fraternity show up, Iota Phi Theta. I don't know a lot about them, uh, but I hope to find out more. And then we have the uh, Black Student, I mean the National Association of Black Journalists. And then I knew Edward Xavier. I knew he was coming, so I had to shout him out. Uh, we have the Chancellor's Ambassadors, and we uh, see students uh, really uh, joining that organization and developing leadership skills. And of course, there's the Black Pre Law Club. So uh, that's kind of what I saw happening. Uh, actually, this is my fifth version of this, I had to cut, 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 cut. It was very painful because I had so many photos. And what I was doing when I was putting together my original slideshow, I was making sure I knew the story as told in the yearbook first. I had to teach myself first. And that's what we do as teachers. So what's next for me uh, with this project? 
I would like to do more oral history interviews. And so far I have in interviewed Miss Nadine Sweat. She was one of the first uh, black females to arrive here in fall of 1957. So you see me talking to her on Zoom on December 3rd, 2022, one month after, exactly after her 84th birthday. She's the same age as my dad. So I would like to talk to her in person as well. I want to talk to some of those uh, uh, some of those folks in that reign of who's who, uh, when it was in the 20s, all the way up to 29. I want to know what was going on then. Uh, Y'all were really, you know, moving and shaking and, and, you know, getting in who's who. I also want to go back and look at some of those early editions of the yearbook. I, I've looked at from the 20s to about 1931. And this is where I found this beautiful uh, lady right here holding this little baby. And the name of this page is Aggie Children. As a historian and someone who likes to dig through records, I want to know if I can find out more about her. What what was going on with the Aggie Children? Was this a nursery school or daycare? What, what, what was it? But I did find her in there. And then Jill found this one and sent it to me. Uh, Aunt Margaret and Uncle Floyd from the 1926 edition. I want to know, uh, what did Aunt Margaret do uh, and Uncle Floyd? The students apparently uh, really admired her. They uh, printed some of her sayings. I mean, she has advice on men, religion, on how to not catch a cold. And um, so apparently the students were listening to this, uh, this, this, this wisdom. So I want to know more about who is Aunt Margaret and Uncle Flo. Deal tipped me off on this one. And then I want to know more about Miss Fanny Catch. Uh, she's in the exhibit, but I have not found her in a yearbook. So I'm digging and I'm doing a little research. I have found a Fanny Cash in the census. It looks like I traced her back to Prairie County in Arkansas, but I'm, I'm double checking uh, a lot of uh, records. So the one I found in the 1920 census is about 46 years old, and she has a son who is 32. He works for the railroad, and I later find out that he has a son, but they are coming out of Bisco, Arkansas. It, if this is the right person. But anyway, just a little bit about Miss Fanny. She was the cook, and apparently uh, she was such a good cook until Senator Harry Carraway stole her from the university and took her to Washington. That's where we lose track of her. So I want to maybe um, in Miss uh, Senator Patty Carraway's papers, maybe she mentions Miss Fanny in there. So, uh, and then here's something else. Jill, she really, when she looks at a photo, she sees things I don't see. She saw this woman sitting there. I'm thinking, I never saw that. I've been looking at that picture for years. And Jill saw that. So we're both very curious about this picture. Uh, something else I want to do, I want to look at the yearbooks that uh, go beyond 2013, just to see if I might find some more information, more milestones for African Americans that were uh, captured in those yearbooks. And uh, I want to go back and look at uh, all the, actually, I've looked at all the news release files because you'll notice I don't have anything in the slideshow about the renaming of the Military Science Building or the Circle Apartment Complex named after the first uh, black professor. So I'd like to go back and gather all that information and really uh, complete the story as far about African Americans at Arkansas State as far as uh, today, I'll put it that way. Okay, so that's kind of what I see happening once again. I wanted to acknowledge all of my sources. Uh, of course, the ASU Online Archive, the ASU Communications Office, Mr. Tom Moore, I think he had to leave early. Uh, Ms. Jill Carey, uh, we were down to the wire. Oh, Tom, you still here? Okay, all right. Jill, uh, we were out three days last week for ICE, and I was thinking, Jill can work the miracle, and I know she can pull it off, so. She, really, she did pull it off, and you'll see uh, with us being out three days last week, the ASU Systems Office, uh, Sharon Lee, I call her file, the BSA file. She has a lot of good stuff over there. And uh, of course, the Centennial book, uh, it was great, a great resource. Uh, Miss Nadine Sweet, uh, Miss Nadine Sweet Bradley, the first uh, African American, one of the first African American students. And uh, of course, Voices from State, where I get all those quotes. That book was uh, put together by Dr. Bill Clement and Dr. Larry Ball. 
and the many other people who have provided links to me. Uh, Dr. Ruth sent me the note about his dad. Uh, that, that was that meant so much to me to finally, because when you're researching, you're digging, it's nothing like finding a solution. Um, thing I'm doing with like Miss Fanny Cat, I mean, I keep finding leads. I think I've tracked her to Prairie County down in Bisco, and I'm thinking, that's, I'm on to something here. So, uh, but anyway, that's where I'm gonna stop right there. As you can see, this is a work in progress, and I wanna thank you all once again for coming. <laughs> question from the live feed and the question was who was the first professional athlete from your high school from my high school and that came from Willie Fear so you probably know who that is <laughs> <laughs> it was my knucklehead brother shout out to my brother Willie he, was, he did play uh, NFL Canadian he coached arena uh, so thank you I'm gonna use your nickname bug <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. What's the last year for the yearbook? Are they still going over? Or is it just no, uh, they voted in 2018 to not start the, it's on the website, the yearbook fee, so it stopped around 2018. That the online editions go through 2013, and then you can skip to another archive and get 2017 and 18. But the Herald is still around. Shout out to uh, Professor Combs, still got the Herald. And we're trying to get it online too, because there's a lot of history captured in the Herald. 101 years, oh, we're going on 102. Anybody else? Yes. How do you engage your students uh, with the of all this different research for this topic? Well, you know they need a grade, number one. And you just, I let them, I really let them do what they wanted to do, and then they were kind of, we, had, we condensed it into four projects. And when I submitted, we submitted as a panel. We had about four different topics. I already knew some people weren't going to show up. They came because it was next April. So um, I just, once I saw what they were interested in, I, I just went from there and combined some projects. So, I don't know if everybody was interested, but I like looking at pictures. I know they like looking at pictures, so. And we divide into groups. At first we had decades, different people on different decades, and it worked out. <laughs> yes? What did you find most interesting during your research? What did I find most interesting? Probably uh, the years of when I was an undergrad. That really brought back a lot of memories. 
raised the I was in the choir. Uh, I was in Public Relations Society of America. That that really brought back a lot of sweet memories. Sometimes when I, I do a lot of walking when the weather's good. I'll be walking around campus and memories just start flooding my soul and my brain because I know uh, about this building, I've watched this happen, I just know the whole campus. I'm a you know a product of the campus. So uh can't jog like I used to, but I'm gonna walk. <laughs> Another, yeah. So, back to Dr. Conway's question. So, the yearbook no longer exists in any form, not even online? That is correct. Following up with that, yes. Do you see a danger of losing history? Because the yearbook is gone and you've you gathered so much history from the yearbook. And you know what? When I saw all the history that I learned, I told you I had to teach myself the history first. And that's why my notes wore me out, literally. I've got this is, I mean, this was painful to cut, to cut it down to this <laughs> for me, but uh, yes, I, I think we will lose some history. I'm glad people like uh, Tom Moore do such a, does such a good job with news releases because we are preserving some history by posting news releases on the website with photos. Now, as far as them coming out in a book form that you can hold, because a yearbook, for an individual is a, a memory book. For the institution, it is a record book. So um, I think we'll lose the ability to capture some, um, preserve some history. And like I said, I'm grateful that we have still have the Herald publishing because we can capture some history that way. If there's nothing else, then it's time to go look at the exhibit. And thank you all again for coming out. You're so nice. You've been great. <laughs>